Welcome back to the vlog today. I'm at the 1-3 table with a $300 buy-in and this game is gonna pop off quick. I fold away some junkers and very quickly look down at a BD. Ace-5 of diamonds in the low jack. The under the gun player limps. The middle position player limps as well. I'm gonna open to 15. I could hit straights. I could hit the nut flush and I've got an ace in my hand. The cutoff throws in three reds. Action folds back around to the under the gun player and he stacks out a stack of 30 and re-raises. Min re-raises after limping. Usually that's a red flag, but there's only $15 more for me to call. My hand has so much potential. I'm definitely going to throw in those extra three. The cutoff comes along as well. 97 in the pot. We're going to the flop, and it is perfect. Three diamonds, nut flush, straight out of the gate. The other gun player quickly checks to me. I should probably start building this pot up, but I decide my hand's so strong. I'm going to play it sneaky, see if anyone else wants to take the lead. I make the check. The cutoff checks as well. We're headed to the turn. It's a 10. The original preflop limp razor decides he's done checking, cuts out some chips, drops two out in the background, and stacks 40 into the middle of the pot. Music to my ears. Do I want to continue lying and wait? Ready to spring my trap? Or is it time to do it right now? With the cutoff behind, I think maybe I can get a call. Or maybe he wants to tangle even more. I'm still very strong, so I decide on just... Yeah, I decide on a call. I decide on a call. This is getting good. The cutoff folds out of the way. I'm sitting with the nuts in position, and my opponent is betting into me. We've got about even stacks. All I ask, dealer, is don't pair the board, and it comes clean. My nuts are solidified, and once again, my opponent immediately goes to grab for chips. He doesn't grab too many, though, and I don't blame him because I know he doesn't have the ace of diamonds. It's sitting comfortably right in front of me. Let's double chip. Yep, there it is. 55 goes into the center like a tomcat hunting down a MIG. I've got a target lock. I'm going for the shot. The question is, can I get max value? 55 seems more like a value bet. If he wanted to bluff me, he probably would have bet a little more. He only has 169 left in his stack. And plus, I want all those chips. Not much more to think about. I shit my whole stack in. And he instantly flips in a chip. I instantly flip on my hand. He grabs his cards, flips them onto the table, turned to straight. Good thing I checked the flop. I was able to get max value out of it. And now, right off the bat, my stack is doubled up. When I sat down at the table moments ago, I had the option to go to the table behind me. I chose not to, and then... <laughs> runner, runner for quads over quads. Look at the size of that baby pot. Great job, dealer. If you haven't hit a jackpot yet, your time is coming. It's a great feeling. Drop a like on this video. That also feels good as well. 620 in my stack, and I pick up 6-7 of clubs under the gun. I open for 13. The middle position player calls. The big blind comes along as well. Deuce 5-10 on the flop. I check to my opponent. The middle position player throws out 20. The big blind calls his bet, and I just fold my hand. Nothing there for me. We're sticking with clubs the next hand, but a better variety indeed. King nine of clubs in the small blind. 600 in my stack. The middle position player opens to 10. I notice this table hasn't responded all that well to three bets, so I decide to go for one. This is right on the edge of that three bet range. Probably should just exclude it, but I make it 45. The middle position, a very good player. Chip leader at the table has me covered. Makes the call as well. We're going to flop in this queen seven jack. I got a gut shot. I got some back doors, one over, but I got heart most of all. I'm not giving up just yet. I threw out 75 and the middle position has no problem making the call 244 in the pot. And the turn is the ace of diamonds, a good card to bluff on. I'm blocking straights and I'm blinded by the bluff. I stock out some chips. I got to go big. I artistically bet 150 into the pot. And this time my opponent didn't call nearly as fast. He thinks about it, sizes it up, shakes his head back and forth. All these motions telling me that he might have a bluff catcher, that the ace might have hurt his hand. Of course, he could be trying to do some reverse tells, tricking me into thinking that he's weak when really he's strong. And he's strong enough to call 150. We're going to the river, and it's a blank. A small amount of chips now lays in the middle, up for grabs, five crisp Benjamins. And I know there's only one way to win this pot. The issue is I only have 330 behind. Is that even enough to push him off of even a decent hand? He's a strong player. He's good enough to make a fold on the river, not get dragged in. I don't want to give up. But I have to think long and hard. Am I really going to be able to push him off the hand? I don't really come to any conclusion other than the fact that it's the only way I'm going to win. I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm going to go for it all. So I shove all in with complete air. And now he goes deep, deep into the tank. Eventually, he pulls a meta move and decides to call clock on himself. Yeah. Clock. 
I don't have a straight. I don't have a straight. After he thought out loud, I realized that he's trying to talk himself into a fold. I tried to tip off the subliminal conscious that maybe I do have a good hand by revealing that I don't in fact have the nuts. I'm not sure if this was wise or not. Usually it's best to just shut your mouth. And if he thinks I got lucky by turning a set, that means that he has at least two pair. I gotta keep up the mind games. I could have kings. I could have kings. I think to myself, it's probably time to shut up Kato. You've given him enough information. He's thinking himself back through the hand. But then he finally says, he mucks his hand and my body floods with relief. And of course, I got to jack up Max Payne. Show the bluff. My attempt to tilt this player clearly doesn't work. This guy's a seasoned veteran. He's not going to be thrown off his rocker that easily. But still, it's good to show the table that you're bluffing. You might get some loose calls later down the road. Without missing a beat, I pick up pocket nines, throw in some chips, and scoop the blinds. And then I finally get a little bit of a rest to recover. Throw away some junkers. 843 in my stack. And I pick up king, queen, offsuit. The player to my right has made it 10. But then when there's a three bet, I just decide to toss it away and I pick up pocket jacks. The under the gun players made it 10. I'm going to three bet this time. I stack out 10 reds, put in a bet of 50. It folds to the button, and the button jams this whole stack in. It's only $83, so of course I'm going to make the call. Interestingly enough, the under the gun player, who's also short stack, shoves his stack in. I'm still not folding. It's only 33 more for me to call. 263, going straight to the river, and it comes out 6-5 deuce. Clear so far, a 6 on the turn. Beautiful. And then, of course, an ace binks on the river, and the button flips up. Big slick, taking down the pot. Although damage has been done, tis but a flesh wound. I make a table change over to the bad beat jackpot table, figuring they're having a lot of fun and they may be gambling. 760 in my stack and I pick up pocket threes on the button. The other gun player limps. I bump it up to 10. The under the gun player calls. We're going heads up 24 in the pot and it's deuce 10 ace. I thought that was a three in the window. I'm sitting here with a pretty crappy pair, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop betting when the under the gun player sends the action my way. I make it 10. And the under the gun player makes the call. I notice that if you bet the same amount on the flop as pre-flop, you almost get called every time, even if they have nothing. The turn is the jack. And once again, he checks to me. I'm going to throw out a little bigger bet this time. Still on the small side, I make it 25. And the villain makes the fold. I'm starting to wind the session down. I'm happy with my profits. And this table isn't what I thought it was going to be. Half the jackpot winners left. The other half are playing super tight. No one's interested in gambling. I fold away a bunch of junk hands. And I'm starting to get a little desperate. Until I pick up 8-7 offsuit. Yep, definitely getting a little desperate. In the big blind, action folds around to the button. Throws in 10, just as the button's expected to do. Trying to take down the blinds. He's not going to get them from me. I make the call, and we're heads up once again. The flop comes out. Ace high. I check to my opponent. He checks right back to me. The turn is a 3. I do have my pair of 8s, but I no need for me to bet. I'm going to go ahead and check again. And the button's going to bet. He makes it 12 with my second pair. And underrepresenting my hand, I make the call. The river's the five, four to a straight out there now, but I wouldn't imagine my opponent had a four. I check it over to him, thinking about check calling. As long as the bet sizing is right, he stacks out eight chips, puts 40 into the pot. This is a pot sized bet. He went pretty big on a four to a straight board. Do I think he has a four? Is he finally trying to get value for an ace? Why wouldn't he bet on the flop? Although before this bet, I told myself if it was a reasonable price, his story just doesn't make sense. So I decide I'm going to make the call, look him up, see what he has. I put in 40. <laughs> he indeed does have a four scooping the pot with a straight. And this table is a lot more boring than I thought it was. The chip stacks are not so great. So I just decided to get up from the table, take my profits for the day, and turn my chips into cold hard cash. In for 300, out for 744 for a profit of $447. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Kato out.